Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight. This is our community meeting for Measure G for um, March 2024. And so thank you. And so to, I will start off with introductions um, to start our meeting first. And so tonight, uh, my name is Julio Royo with Maintenance Operations and Safety for the Mill Valley School District. Along tonight, we also have um, couple members from our team or AECOM team. We have Sandrine Hitchcock, who's our program manager, as well with Lyonakis, our Mill Valley Middle School architect. We have Laura Nas, principal in charge, and Mark Jewell, and who's our architect. And also who will be joining us shortly is Elizabeth Kaufman, our superintendent. And I'm going to, to go over ground rules first, I'm going to um, pass it to Carrie with End to Action to go over the ground rules for the meeting. Good evening. Um, as we always start, we'd like to talk about the great norms for our meeting that are set by this school because they're wonderful. Um, first and foremost, keep students and learning at the center. Second, which we do, speak to each other with kindness and respect. Third, listen to each other with compassion and curiosity. curiosity. And finally, be a part of the solution. Always wonderful to say those norms again, because I like them. Um, and if you haven't and aren't on the list to receive notifications, updates, and great communications, there is a sign-up sheet here, and you can also access that from the website as well. Um, today, as in previous meetings, we are exclusively using Slido, for, especially for the folks online for questions and comments. And if you go to Slido, S-L-I-D-O.com, and our meeting number today is 3232-234. That is 3232-234. We don't get to choose those. I think they just come at us, so I like that one. Um, so when you're submitting your questions, the reason why we use Slido is that it's equitable and we can get them in order by time and by online and in the room. Um, but if you don't have the inclination or technology and you're in the room with us today, there are uh, question forms on the bookcase over there and we can also come around to you with them if you need. Um, so let us know by flagging us. If you need those, if you don't have access or are not inclined to use Slido. So the questions will be, will be in the order received. And again, that's slido.com 3232-234. And I'm going to send it right back to Julio. And welcome, Dr. Kaufman. Thank you. And uh, Dr. Kaufman's um, also going to give an, just an update and overview of the meeting for Measure G. And then we'll get started on the presentation. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for continuing with us on this journey. Uh, I feel like we're in a little bit of a pivotal moment where we're kind of getting ready. We've, we we know where we're going. Um, we don't quite know what we're building yet. And um, this is kind of where, to me, it gets exciting because we get to look at um, really the next two years and uh, how we're going to build an amazing middle school um, for our children. And I am just grateful for everyone who's had the um, time and patience and grace to hang with us in this adventure of uh, building Measure G projects. Thank you. And we'll get started on the presentation. I'll pass it to Laura, who will um, get started on the, the presentation in um, the next couple of slides. Great, thank you. Um, some of you may recall, if you've been following along, that uh, very early in the process, we examined all of the district-owned properties for their um, viability as either interim housing or permanent location for Mill Valley Middle School. Finding only the Edna McGuire site to meet the site size considerations, we evaluated that a little bit more in depth, um, found that there was a significant need to um, uh, re renovate and add to that to accommodate a middle school population, but also that we would um, need to uh, disperse all of the Edna McGuire students on the existing elementary school sites. Um, ultimately, uh, the board uh, decided not to pursue um, the Edna McGuire site for those reasons. The disruption to um, the elementary schools, uh, the remaining elementary schools, the disruption to Edna McGuire, and uh, the likely environmental impacts of the Edna McGuire site. 
Uh, what we did do is look at renovation then of the existing uh, Mill Valley Middle School campus. Um, and you see the aerial photo here. Uh, we wanted, we acknowledge that to um, build the school and the existing location, we would need a temporary, uh, a temporary campus. Uh, we did acknowledge that is a low carbon option, the reuse of an existing space, but it did have significant uh, requirements that come with that, including a full seismic rehabilitation and uh, the testing that goes with that, some um, concerns about sea level rise and the ground floor elevation. While it's above the FEMA floodplain, it is not above the predictive um, uh, sea level rise uh, uh, heights that we were um, have shared previously, and that we had to bring this entire building up to code, both for the building envelope, um, for energy codes and other things, as well as all building systems. Um, it would still require that temporary campus, and ultimately um, it was looked at from the board through the lens, next please, of um, how we best accommodate the educational program at Mill Valley Middle School. And so the code compliance challenges and educational expectations um, ultimately led, next please, to the board uh, determining that a rebuild was the better option for the students at Mill Valley Middle School. When we move into the conceptual design phase, um, we I, I really want to point out that these are test fits, right? This is just to make sure space um, aligns. We are uh, headed later this month to a re-engagement of our steering committee where we'll be looking at multiple options uh, for the site beyond the ones you see here. But the early test fits allowed us to have start the conversation with both the board of trustees and the steering committee community, steering committee and the community. So um, all of these options or both of these options do require a temporary campus. And we'll see that uh, in just a few minutes. But we also looked at things like one story, two story, single building uh, options, multi-building campus style options that allowed the steering committee to weigh in. Next, please including um, we had a great opportunity to tour some recently uh, built schools, uh, both two-story single building options and one-story campus uh, style options that led us to exploring a one-story option for this site. You can see it takes quite a bit more footprint space and that was part of the discussion. Uh, the pros for that from the um, teachers were that it gave each classroom direct access to the outdoors. So we'll be bringing those options back to them. Uh, right now it appears that the two-story or a portion of the campus being two-story is the pre preferred alternative. Next, please. So then we looked at um, uh, the temporary campus and all of the pieces that go with that. And uh, the general contractor developed some rough order of magnitude costs. Can you do that one? Can you do more? Um, we were tasked by the board to meet the $130 million option. Um, there did appear to be some savings on the single story option, um, but that will be part of our next phase of exploration uh, to determine um, the best option overall. And then, as we mentioned, each of the options we're exploring for this site uh, is requiring temporary housing. Um, you can see there's a significant uh, use of existing facilities, the multi-purpose and the uh, portable buildings that currently surround that will remain as part of the temporary campus, but we will also be adding um, portable buildings north of the creek on the basketball courts, as well as in the existing parking lot. Uh, there's an estimated cost just north of $15 million for the temporary campus. The temporary campus does have to meet all of the code requirements of a permanent facility, and that obviously is impactful on um, the budget. 
We thought we would share a little bit of what we heard at the steering committee uh, level um, in order at the time of our last meeting, we hadn't resolved the site location. So we tried very much to focus on the kit of parts that would be part of any new campus. And at the end of the third uh, committee meeting, we took a vote on a few key areas to help advise us as we move forward. Uh, one is they preferred a pod configuration for uh, by grade level so that they can keep all of the uh, classrooms that serve that grade together. Uh, that they prefer science to be integrated into that pod. So science teachers were part of the um, teaching um, group for that area. As I kind of alluded to, the one story versus two story was a little bit of a show me first and, and we'll see. And then um, we asked if there was um, surplus funds. Um, we do have a significant nest egg uh, put away for site mitigation issues. Uh, where would they prioritize additional available funding? And that's something between an enclosed gathering space or a significant renovation of the existing multi-purpose building. Uh, quickly, we can share some of the pod configurations and the preferred pod configurations we looked at uh, that basically group those classrooms around a central um, learning area. Uh, we have options that have that both exterior as a courtyard, um, covered courtyard space, and uh, interior where they surround a, a central resource space. Um, and these are just some of the renderings of what that exterior courtyard space could look like. And uh, it was really important that teachers, they wanted to be able to send students outside without um, being able to see them um, as so immediately adjacent to their classrooms. And it, the two-story part of that made it a little bit more difficult. So this courtyard concept where the second story is a, an outdoor courtyard was one that uh, played really well with the uh, steering committee. The next uh, preferred pod is the same, but adds an indoor collaboration space uh, linking five classrooms um, to each of those pod spaces. And you can see a slightly different 3D image with some precedent photos um, that show a little bit of what that space could be or could look like um, and opening to the outdoors as well. And so um, then we began some conceptual massing. Uh, what does it look like in three dimensions? And you can see uh, two two-story wings, a single-story wing, um, and a two-story wing, or the one-story wings. This will be the starting point um, for uh, the options that we'll explore with the steering committee. Uh, we also talked a lot about sustainability in our second committee. Um, I really like this diagram because it um, it's influential on what really matters in sustainable buildings. And that is that we first want to reduce demand um, for the um, uh, power and carbon and other um, resources. And the best way to do that is behaviors, changing behaviors. And we can encourage that in buildings with um, sensors and recycling stations and um, other things like that that encourage the behavior. But there are operational things that influence that as well. Um, we look at efficiency as the building envelope. Um, how do we reduce that demand by making the best building roof walls that we can? How do we respond to that uh, with building systems? Uh, this will be an all electric campus, for example. And then um, the cherry on top, if you will, is those renewables and transformational ideas that come out of the process. We did receive from Sustainable Mill Valley a list of goals and objectives um, for this site. And uh, we went over that with the steering committee as well. Uh, you can see their list there that includes electric appliances, EV charging. So there's a mix of both the, the building um, specific sustainable measures, but also operational uh, measures. And on the next um, sheet, you can see in green 
all of the things that will be required as part of code um, that were on their list. So um, we now have all electric campuses required by code. We have level two EV charging stations required by code, solar panels and analysis for battery storage required by code, bicycle parking and storage. And um, we do a water assessment that really prompts um, all native plants with the exception of using turf for PE. On the next uh, sheet, we've added in orange those things that are really operational issues that will pass on to the district, um, school buses, reusable foodware, waste management. But we will be looking at waste management in the construction and demolition of this site as well. And then on the last page, um, the three areas from their specific list that we have some ability to um, explore more deeply and bring more ideas to the table, sustainable uh, building materials, the recycling and reuse of demolition. And then they had suggested no artificial turf. Um, we also talked a lot about the things that are um, already required, as I mentioned, in the energy, all electric, solar panels, battery storage. In the water, we do a model water analysis for landscape water, but we can also look at domestic water, low flow fixtures, uh, composting, and other things, as well as uh, readying the site for reclaimed water uh, at some point in the future when the city might have reclaimed water. Um, the big analysis or the big change in code that we have coming July 1st is that we will be doing a life cycle analysis of this project uh, for embodied carbon and uh, how we are uh, meeting the objectives of the embodied carbon of this building. And then there are things we can do to measure it and certify uh, that we haven't decided, the district has not yet decided uh, what, if any of these we will pursue, but we do parallel the guidelines regardless of whether we pursue uh, certification. With that, lots of talk. Um, our next steps, as I mentioned, we have this steering committee uh, meeting at the end of the month. Uh, we'll be discussing the evolving site alternatives, massing, materiality, and some things like that. Um, in May, we'll have another uh, meeting with the steering committee where uh, we'll meet at the departmental level and kind of look from the inside out. And then we'll be completing the cost modeling in June in order to bring that back uh, to the board in June or early July for their approval to move forward. Thank you, Laura. Um, next slide, please. So the next couple of slides focus on the elementary school sites. And so what we wanted to do is just give an overview of where we're at with elementary school sites. This is our master schedule. And so the way that we're phasing the elementary sites is we're doing two each summer um, that we're going to be doing construction. So for example, for summer of uh, 2025, we have Tan Valley and Strawberry that we're working towards for construction during that time to do the party one listed items. And then the next summer will be Old Mill and Park. And then the summer after that would be Edna. And so that's how we're grouping the elementary school sites um, with the planning going on right now for those two sites right now. And right here are the list of items. And so these items came from our party one project list that came from our facility master plan adopted in 2021. And so this was based off a of site assessment and feedback from the site of the priority one of the pro, pro, uh, priority projects. And so those are the ones that are we're working on right now for um, the work at each elementary school site. And I'll pass it to Sandrine for just an overview on the financing, the budget and the financing. Sure, thank you. Um, so uh, as Julio mentioned, we're working on uh, Strawberry and Tam at the time at this time with um, JKE, our architect, uh, and GCCI, the contractor. Um, and since we completed the assessment conceptual phase, we um, 
got uh, an estimate for Strawberry and Tim. We wanted to provide an update on how we're tracking. Uh, so currently we are tracking um, within the budget uh, that we had allocated towards those schools. So uh, as we move forward, we will keep bringing those updates. Um, and also we wanted to um, share both hard cost and estimated soft cost for all sites. And finally, um, just wanted at the last uh, board meeting, we wanted to clarify uh, something that that uh, maybe was misunderstood. But um, so the the board approved one hundred thirty million dollars um, hard cost towards the middle school. Uh, what this means is that the additional state funds will be allocated to the middle school only all uh, funds towards the modernizations will come from Measure G. So just wanted to clarify that for everyone. Sorry, I'm borrowing her mark. I want to put our AECOM team on the spot for a minute. Um, we received, saw in the newspaper last week or the week before that you had all been selected by the county um, to address sea level rise. Um, and I know that's been something that's come up repeatedly here and, you know, sort of while we've been saying we have a crack team, um, I felt very affirming to see that our AECOM team had indeed been selected by our very own county to address uh, some of the impacts that we've been talking about here. So I don't want to put you on the spot, but I just did. Yeah. And um, my comment would be um, not entirely flattering for AECOM. To be to be very candid, we're an extremely large company, and I actually had no idea that our environmental group had pursued that. But I did reach out and let them know that uh, we would be working together, or at least tr trying to work together. And so, um, in in some cases, you know, with a company of fifty thousand people, we often don't know the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing, and I admit that. But yes, we will be working together uh, on this. So, uh, thanks. Thank you. And so um, that's the end of our presentation. This is a Slido QR code. Um, for those in the room, you can um, ask questions through a paper copy and, and pen, as well as we have the Slido option here. And I'll have uh, Carrie and our Into Action team take it away. Well, there. well, we only have one so far. And thank you to Cliff for this great comment. Want to thank Lyonakis for the thorough and understandable explanation for why the current MVMS cannot be, I'm, oh, sorry, cannot be remodeled and rehabbed. Thank you, exclamation mark. And we welcome additional friends and family at our Slido 3232-234. Join. Oh. Oh, sorry. I can come to you. Uh, uh, my name is Shen. I'm a parent and community member. Uh, two questions. One is, uh, are there any update on the soil testing result? I can no. have uh, Sandrine kind of give an update of what the forecast of the environmental work that we will be doing. Absolutely. So um, two parts, really. For the soil, there's the environmental testing um, for the mitigation measures. And there's also the geotech portion of it. Um, so as far as the um, environmental piece, we onboarded uh, Ninio and more back in November. Uh, we have started the process with DTSC, uh, so they're working on the PE, which stands for Preliminary and Detriment Assessment, uh, which we will be presenting to DTSC over um, in a hopefully in a couple months. Uh, so we are hoping that by mid summer we would have a good draft and understanding of the conditions and the mitigation measures. 
when it comes to the geotechnical portion, we are in the process of, or we have a proposal from a geotechnical engineer, which will be brought uh, to the board for approval at the next meeting. And we'll start that process too. Um, the second question is the uh, one wing, one story, second wing, two story. I'm wondering um, if the two story wing should be on the north instead of on the south uh, to get more sun and breeze in. Um, so I mentioned that those were a little bit of placeholders. I don't think our end and uh, site plan based on the work we've been doing will look like those. Um, some of the things we have are one, to take more advantage of views and the um, north daylight and having um, single story buildings on the north. So I guess I'll say stay tuned. Uh, after our meeting with the steering committee on April 23rd, we'll have um, options that are more vetted against the site analysis. And hi, Melissa Yakel McClatchy, also a parent and community member. Uh, it is interesting. There was close to a $5 million difference between a two-story and a one-story building. And with such tight budgets and, you know, we can't fit everything into the cost envelope, I guess the question becomes um, desire versus, you know, budget and two-story. You know, if you looked at the, the steering committee, it was a even you know, that was an even split. So I guess, you know, as a community member, just keeping that focus on how we're using our dollars and stretching those dollars and maximizing them, um, I think it's going to be critical. Any other comments? Let me check Slido again. Still went in Slido. Any other comments in the room? This is exciting. Great job, everyone. What time are we meeting tomorrow? Uh, <laughs> tomorrow night, there's an El Cap community engagement meeting if anyone would like to join us. And I believe next um, Thursday, Cam, is that tomorrow too? That's next week. Okay, so tomorrow is El Cap and then April 4th is going to be an overview with Verkata um, of uh, plans for safety and security cameras. Uh, so if nothing else, please read the family newsletter because that will be up, provide up-to-date information about what our plans are since uh, we don't necessarily remember them on the spot now, but we would love as many people to participate in these upcoming events as we can have. Excellent. Yay, family newsletter. Okay, we're going to close up the meeting. Thanks, everybody, for joining us tonight. Um, unless there's any other questions from the group? No? Okay, well, thank you very much. We appreciate you guys joining us, and we'll um, set a community meeting in the future as we start developing our design and planning. Thank you.